Hi, I'm AJ and thanks for clicking on my channel. If you're not a current subscriber, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button because you're going to like this video. And also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I create a video. Today we're going to talk about five simple ways to increase your savings. When creating a budget, one of the most important parts of your budget is actually your savings. You want to put money to the side. You want to create an emergency fund. So if there's ever an issue going on in your life or there's an unexpected bill that you can take care of that and you don't have to worry about going into further debt to take care of any issues that may arise. So there are many different ways that you can save money, um, but I'm going to talk about five simple ways that you can save money. And this is something that anyone can do. It doesn't take any special skills. Anyone can implement this. It's really just taking more time to think about what you're doing on your daily and monthly activities. So the first way you can increase your savings is by when you're shopping, always ask for a discount. Now this actually used to be a tough one for me. I was always a person that, you know, if I wanted to buy something, I would just go out and buy it. I didn't think about, you know, searching on the internet to try to find a better deal. I didn't think about, you know, if, if there wasn't something that was already advertised as far as a discount, I didn't really worry about it. You know, I made a decision about what I wanted to buy and I just went ahead and got it. Now, the problem with not asking for a discount is that someone may actually give you a discount. Uh, there may be a special promotion going on that's not being advertised. There may be coupons that they have that aren't really part of their advertised deals, but it's something that they have going on on a rolling basis. For instance, Bed Bath & Beyond, they have these 20% coupons that they have, and they usually send them out to you through the mail. Now, these coupons actually have expiration dates on them, but if the coupon is expired, they will still accept those coupons. So even if you don't have that coupon with you, maybe they'll have some in the store and the associates are usually happy to give you uh, those coupons if they have them available. And that goes for pretty much any store that you go to. If there's something that you don't already know about as far as the discount, of course, the person that's working behind the counter, they're going to know the multiple ways that you can potentially get a discount. You know, whether that's signing up for their email list and you may immediately get a discount just for signing up for that list. This could be the last day of a sale and the coupon books aren't out and available to everyone, but they may still be available for you to use. They're just not being advertised in the store. Or maybe there's an app that the employee knows about that you can use to get a discount at the store that you're at. So it's always best to just ask the worst thing they can do is tell you no, and you'll still be in the same position. You'll still be paying the same amount of money that you would have paid even if you hadn't asked before. So you really have nothing to lose. Now, the second best thing to do is to, before you even get to the store, you should comparison shop. You should go online to all of the different stores that you know of that sells that product. And maybe one of them has a deal going on that week. Or for instance, at Target, you always have 5% off at Target if you have a Target red card. So if the price of something at Target versus Walmart or another retailer, if it's the exact same price at all of the stores, you might as well buy it at the store where you can get 5% off. Or if it's a store like Bed Bath & Beyond and you know there's always a coupon out there, if it's the same price at Target, you might as well go to Bed Bath & Beyond because that 5% discount that you're getting at Target isn't as good as a potential 20% discount that you could get at a store like that. And of course, with e-commerce being a big thing nowadays, going on Amazon, Amazon is usually pretty low in their prices compared to other places. And that's because they don't have the brick and mortar stores and the employees that you know they have to pay and the extra utilities that they have to pay in order to keep a store open. So they typically have lower prices. But you can't always assume, even with Amazon, that it is the lowest price. So you check Amazon, you check Target, Walmart, you check every store that could potentially sell that item and try to get the best price before you actually pick your item. Now, the next best way to increase your savings is to shop off season. So if you're looking to buy winter clothes, you want to shop for those winter clothes during the summertime because they're not an item that people are really looking for because it's not that season. And that means those items are gonna be at a discount automatically just because no one's really looking to make those purchases. And this can also vary based on where you live. So I live in a somewhat of a touristy area. And so we have a lot of people, what we call snowbirds, people who live up north, but they come down south for the winter. 
And while they're down south, all of the stores in this area, they're catering to those people. Now they're not providing extra discounts because those people are here. They're actually usually increasing their prices so that the people who are coming down, people that they know that have money can spend it while they're here. And so for about six months throughout the year, maybe a little bit more than that, you have an influx of people. And then around April, May, a lot of these people then go back up north and that leaves these stores kind of barren. So now that these stores are losing a large amount of their customers because a lot of them have left the city, now these are when items go on sale. So around April or May, what I would used to do, I, I would actually go to Dillard's and every April there will be a sale and you could get between 60 to 80% off on the same items that were there all year round. But now because they know they have a lower customer base, they wanna get rid of these items before the next season that way they don't just have inventory piling up and so one time i actually went out and bought like 10 pairs of slacks for like 100 bucks so at a store like dillard's getting some really nice quality pants for ten dollars 10 to 15 dollars is pretty much unheard of now these stores are trying to get rid of these products because they didn't sell them during their peak season and they know that for the next three to four months they're not going to have as large as a customer base so they have to get rid of these products before they bring in the new products for the next season. Now, another time-based way you can save is to shop after a holiday. So when you're going into a major holiday like Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, these are holidays where people usually spend a lot of money. And typically people will buy their items before because you know you want to buy the decorations and you wanna buy the candy for Halloween. And for Thanksgiving, you wanna buy those decorations as well. And for Christmas, you're buying decorations, you're buying presents. Now, after those holidays pass, especially with Christmas, there's a big slowdown in the amount of shopping that's going on. Now you've gone through the fourth quarter gauntlet of holidays and after Christmas ends, it's like anything that they weren't able to sell during those holidays, now they need to sell it at a discount because no one's gonna be looking for those items for at least another nine or 10 months. So this is a great way to prepare for the next season. So as these holidays pass by, you wanna get the items that are specific to those holidays. You wanna buy them, that way you can use them in the next year. And they, you can usually get them for at least 60% off, sometimes up to 90% off, just because they need to get rid of those products that they aren't gonna be able to sell for at least another nine or 10 months. Now, another way you can save money is to take your fluctuating expenses, things like your water bill or your light bill that will change. They're not fixed cost, but they are fixed expenses. And you take the average that you normally spend. So let's say you normally spend $65 on your electric bill. If last month you only spent $60, you take that $5 and you put it in a special account. That way, if you ever have a month where you go over, you have that extra money already saved instead of going into your paycheck, you know, spending extra money that you didn't budget for, you have that smaller savings account that you can use to make up the difference for those fluctuating expenses. And now that leads me to the, the biggest point of this video is after you've taken those simple steps to get discounts or save money on the things that you're spending your money on, now you wanna actually save your savings. Now this is something we used to do and we're gonna start doing this again because it was a great way for us to save and we would specifically use this method to pay for our travel. So what we would do is we would keep track of all of our receipts for the month and then at the end of the month, we would look at all of our receipts and anytime we got a discount when we we're grocery shopping, buying clothes, buying electronics, no matter what the case was, if we received a discount on those items, we would calculate what that discount was, like the actual money we saved. So let's say an item was $100 and we saved 20% because we used a coupon at Bed Bath & Beyond, for example. We would now write down that we saved $20. And when we got that buy one, get one at Publix, it was an item that was $5, it went on buy one, get one. So we got two items for the price of one at $5. So we're gonna take that $5 that we saved by not buying the second item, and we're gonna add that to the list as well. And so once you take all of your receipts, you add up all of the savings that you made for that month, and then whatever that amount is, you now take that amount and you put that into a savings account. 
Now, if you don't actually put that money to the side, you're going to find a way to spend that money. Instead of actually saving, what you're going to do is you're going to end up spending on some other item. Because it's like, wow, I have an extra $20. Let me go spend $20 on X, Y, and Z. Instead of actually putting that money in a savings account, or better yet, putting that money into an investment account, that way that money can grow. So depending on what works best for you, for some people, the best bet for them would be to, as soon as they get that discount, they write it down, they go on their phone, they transfer that amount into their savings account. But if you're well organized and you're okay with keeping up with receipts for an entire month, you collect those receipts and then you do one transfer at the end of the month, that way you're not transferring like 50 cents because you save 50 cents on an item and then 36 cents on some other item. You just calculate all of that at the end of the month. You do one transfer. It's very simple and easy. And the reason we're actually thinking about doing that again is because, you know, we went shopping recently and Gymboree, which is a children's clothing store, is actually going out of business. And so we went to the store. We found out, wow, it's 75% off of everything because they're liquidating, they're going bankrupt, they have to sell all of their items. And so we're getting this nice discount on clothes that we'll need for our baby anyway. So quick side note, using these steps, you should only buy things that you need. Otherwise you won't be able to save that money. So after we went to Gymboree, we ended up spending $50 at Gymboree. But because that was at a 75% discount, it means that we would have actually spent $200 if we had bought it at regular price. So as a way to increase the amount of savings we have for this month, we're gonna put that extra $150 that we didn't actually spend, we're now gonna put that into our savings account or into our investment account. That way we can actually save that money. Unless we actually save that money by putting it into a savings account or investment account, we didn't actually save anything. All we did was we spent $50 and we got more items than we normally would with that $50, but we didn't actually save anything. Um, especially if you're going out and you're buying things that you don't need. And that's how stores will normally get you to buy more items. They'll show that, okay, you know, we're having a 50% off, we're having this extra 20% coupon, and then that compels you to either buy more or to buy an item that you weren't ready to purchase at that moment, but because you saw that it's on sale, you're gonna buy it now because you're like, oh, it may not go on sale. And so these companies know this and that's why they'll have a discount on something. Sometimes they'll even raise the price and then put a discount on it to show that, oh wow, this is actually on sale, but it's really the same price that they were gonna sell it to you anyway. Unless you comparison shop and you've been looking at this item for a while, you won't really know what the manufacturer's suggested retail price was unless you've been watching this item for a while. So as a summary, make sure you always ask for a discount. Make sure you comparison shop. Make sure you shop during the off season for whatever the item is that you're purchasing. Make sure that you shop after major holidays because these are usually when you can get the best discounts. Make sure that for your fluctuating expenses, Take the average that you normally have for that bill, and whenever you go below that average, save whatever that amount is into a separate account. And last but not least, after you've taken all of these steps, make sure you actually save your savings. Whatever discount you received, whatever dollar amount that is, even if it's only 30 cents, 50 cents, or just a couple of dollars, once you add that up at the end of the month, it can really make a huge difference. And so you put that money into the savings account, or you put it into an investment account where you can get free trading like a N1 Finance, a SoFi Invest, or a Robinhood. All right, guys, thanks for watching my video. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch this. Uh, if you're not a current subscriber, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It's right below. Also hit that like button because you really like this video and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I create a video. Again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.